Um, please kindly look for the video of the last two sessions um, for day end and month end activity. For this video, we are going to be looking at, for this session, we're going to be looking at year end activity um, for, of course, which the SAP um, users and consultants are supposed to um, go through in order to uh, close out for the old financial year. Also activity that involves opening the new, new financial year and uh, making it fit for transactions to be posted. So the essence of the yearly um, close out activities are to make sure that um, all the transactions that happened in the previous fiscal year uh, are being closed out, especially for the balance sheet items, because these balances are supposed to be moved to the new fiscal year so that the financial transactions can um, move forward and can, can, can actually continue. So we're going to be looking at these activities, having SAP at the back of our mind. Um, also, we're going to you can refer to our previous videos, like I said, on day end and month end. Now let's look at the overview of the year end closing activities. Before we go to the closing activities proper, we need to look at the pre-closing activities. By pre, we mean activities before the year end activities, activities that happen before the year end activity. Okay, so the pre-closing pre, um, closing activities are um, for technical, we're looking at opening accounting um, period, which is done at the FI level. For FI, we look at entering accruals and deferrals, process, recurring transactions, bad debt and bad debt expenses in, of course, your account receivable, post depreciation and interest expenses in asset accounts. For MM, we're going to look at the, um, the MM consultant most likely will maintain the GRO and IRO uh, postings and post material valuation, stock counts and the rest of them. Um, HR will be looking at um, post payroll, sorry about that. We're looking at post payroll expenses um, and reconcile staff advances and liabilities. As they should be looking at post goods issues for deliveries to customers. Um, the technical end also, uh, should also be looking at closing the old months, closing all sub-ledgers, primary close of GL accounts. Now, basically, these are activities that should happen. Of course, we also have the position, making sure that all the assets are depreciated, and every other activity. But these are activities that should happen before or during the year end and activity and process. Okay, so let's look at the next slide. Okay. So for managerial and external closing activities, which also happens in SAP, we're looking at uh, would, um, the activities involve CEO allocations and reposting, that's SAP CEO, and locking old accounting period in CEO, that's cost uh, management accounting, reopening the GL for adjustment postings, most likely when you have your audit adjustments, please um, refer to the month end closing process for these activities. Foreign currency valuations and financial statement adjustments and create external internal reports. These are also activities, closing activities that happen at the managerial and external level. So for the year end activity proper, where we have some of these activities we look into um, this list is not exhaustive, but I believe that for every person who is going to be doing the end closing activities, these are very important activities that should happen in order for you to successfully close your previous year and open the new year for your transactions. So we're going to be going into the system. The first we're going to be looking at is number range change. Um, which is very important because all the documents posted in XAP are posted within a particular number range. So for the new period, we should actually copy new, um, copy existing number ranges or create new number ranges for the new financial year. We're going to look at carrying forward balances, 
we look at uh, for ARO and AP, GL balance carried forward, ARO confirmation, AP confirmation, financial statement, and then of course, financial statement actual comparison. We look at close previous accounting period. We look at foreign, foreign currency valuation. We have done this already in the month end process. Look at asset explorer, fixed asset year end closing, position run, and then of course, asset fiscal year change. So to carry out these activities, um, let's go to our SAP system. Okay, so we're going to be shuttling between uh, SAP and presentation. So the first transaction code we have is the number range change. So this is important to enable the new period um, have number ranges it will assign to various documents it's going to be using um, to do the necessary postings for the new fiscal year. When you enter the number range, validate by clicking on enter, uh, transport number range intervals is fine, say okay. Here um, you can, now you see the document, this transaction code says document number range copy to fiscal year. So the, the essence of this is to copy number ranges from the previous fiscal year to the new fiscal year. This should happen at the, at the first or few, few days into the new fiscal year, the first day of the new fiscal year actually, um, to enable um, documents have number ranges to do the necessary postings. So let's say, for example, um, the company code I want to copy this number range from is um, PCS3. Um, if you have a number range number, you can actually specify um, source fiscal year. So let's say the fiscal year um, you want to copy from is 2020. I want to copy these number ranges to my new fiscal year 2021. So when you enter these options, you click on the sign execute. Then you are changing your settings. This you should confirm to ensure that um, your movement is fine. Uh, because um, this activity requires some um, back end run, requires some time. Now you can see that this at this um, number range copy to the new fiscal year was successful. You have the company code, you have the numbers that have been copied, you have the year it was copied to, and you have the interval, you have the status or the result. Now this is a very important activity that should happen at the beginning of the new fiscal year, in order for your documents to be able to post with the new number ranges. So that's the first activity. We're going to go back to see the next task. The next task is to carry forward balances. And of course, this is also very important. Um, in order for you to um, successfully begin your new fiscal year, it's important that balances are being carried forward. Um, they are being closed out at the old at the um, old fiscal year. And before this activity should be done, it should be, it's important that all pre-closing um, activities are, have been successfully done. You have to verify the accounts payable. You have to verify the accounts receivable. Verify customer and vendor balances. Um, post your reconciliations. Um, perform the necessary um, verifications you need to do for your AP and, and for your customer and vendor accounts and carry forward the balances. So the transaction code to carry forward balance is F.07. That's going to go to a SAP system. F.07, you can enter. Okay, at this level, you have the option of selecting the particular um, company code you want to carry forward um, receiver and payable balances from. So you select your company code, carry forward to fiscal year. So we are carrying forward to the new fiscal year 2021. Which of the selections do you want? You want to carry customer balance, 
we want to carry vendor balances. Um, please, um, we have to leave this at um, test run. We can execute. Now, this is a very important activity um, for the AN process. And um, remember to do your pre closing activities before this is done. So you can see now that the balances that was carried forward was successful. For the company code, we had five records for the customer and GL account. For the special GL account for, we had two um, special GL, of course, and we had two records for the vendor GL, we had eight records. So you can see the status that this was carried forward successfully. So we'll go back. And, uh, at the next activity. So we have carried forward ARO and AP balances. The next is to carry forward the GL account balance. So we go to F.16. Let's go back. F.16. We can enter. Now, of course, select the ledger you want to, that you're picking this information from. So we are using the leading ledger, which is OL as the second. The company code, we can use PCS3. Leave this as test run level. We are carrying forward to 2021 and click on execute. Okay, so let's see this. We've done one of this before. Second, leading ledger. Yes. One of our ledgers. So this, this should be your leading ledger. Yes, I want to check that configuration. Leading ledger is OL. Okay, so you can see that the log was successful. It, it's on test strong. The fiscal year for the balances to be carried forward at the GL level is 2021. Company code. Balance carry forward successfully completed. Uh, carry forward prior currencies. So this shows that this is a successful um, um, test run. And uh, it's important that GL accounts um, balances are being carried forward for the new fiscal year. So this is also a very important activity that should happen at the end of your fiscal year or the beginning of the new fiscal year. Okay, so the next we're going to look at is accounts receivable confirmation. Now, at the beginning of the fiscal year, um, the balance carry forward program is run. And um, this requires carrying forward balances of the uh, customer accounts to the new fiscal year. Um, actually, the posting periods of the, of the old fiscal year are blocked, and the special posting period for the closing. Um, post for closing for the closing period are open. So um, remember, we have um, in SAP we have about sixteen periods. Um, four of them are special periods. Um, during this activity, the first twelve periods, which are your calendar year, um, are actually closed, and the special periods, which are four periods, are actually opened. Okay, now the the balances for. Um, your, of course, that we hope to uh, do your confirmation for um, are then confirmed. Uh, the essence of this basically is to send this confirmation to your customers because um, at the end of the year, they need to um, agree with you on what their, their balance with you is. So let's say you have a customer ABC and you have an account with him and you are supposed to, the essence of this is to send a confirmation to that customer telling him that our balance with you is 
um, let's say thousand dollars. The essence of that is for the customer to be aware of this balance and also to do a confirmation that indeed um, we agree that this um, is actually the balance that is open. The same happens for the AP uh, vendor confirmation. Uh, you have to send this uh, actually is sent in the form uh, of um, an email, a message. And uh, the, the essence of that is to, uh, for both parties to agree on what um, their balances are. Now you can run reports using SAP F130D for your customers or SAP F130K for your vendors, or probably use the transaction code F.17 and F.18. And you, for, for this to be visible, you can run the following, you can choose the following procedures. Um, you can do a balance confirmation with this transaction code. You can do a balance notification. And of course, you can also run a balance request. Okay, now for each company code that this transaction is run for, the report output um, could be a checklist or an error list. So you could actually open up, when you run the particular report, you can get a checklist of um, the necessary um, balances that are due, or you can actually have an error list. And um, of course, um, in order for this to um, be successful, you must specify at least one address to which the balance confirmation should be sent in your company code. So at the company code level during configuration, that company code must have an address for which this balance confirmation um, will be sent. It's very, very important uh, that this configuration is done, except or else we're going to be having um, an error list. So let's run the first uh, confirmation F.17. Okay, um, so this is um, your customer balance confirmation. I'm also going to introduce you to the uh, concept of variants. Variants are predefined um, settings, or predefined conditions that have been set. Um, when you're actually doing your, when you're doing your postings in SAP. Um, so um, if this transaction is a regular transaction, or if there's a particular standard for which the organization wants this report to be displayed, you can save them in variants so that when you want to process them subsequently, you don't need to enter all those specifications. You just get your variants and run your report. So I'll go to this icon called get variants. You can also save your own variant. It's, um, it's very, very good. Uh, I have a variant here called Kelly.17. Um, if you're done, you can save your variant by using this save variant option. So that subsequently you don't you just go get your variant and do your transactions. So this is my company code. Enter the reconciliation key date, which is the end of the year. Um, for further selections, you can select um, for an individual customer, you can select for a one time customer. And, uh, also, uh, let us also display zero balances, uh, your master records, the date should be unlimited. Sort variants for correspondence. Uh, we're using K3, click the option, we will to see other options. The drop down. So you have sort by postal code, sort by account number, sort by document number. So I'm using sort by document number. Also for line item sorting, um, I'm using, I'm sorting for this document using my document date and document number. Line item um, is done at the customer master data level. Okay, so the date of issue, you can specify the date of issue. Then please select no reply since we're not um, sending any reply back. We're not expecting a reply back from the customer. Then you have, can also, it's important that for printing, you enter LP01 as the printer um, form. 
both for your form search, your registration list, your result table, error list, and selection. Select the printer and format LP01. When you're done, you can execute this transaction. So the essence of this is to view the balance confirmation and to be able to forward this confirmation to the customer to either agree or uh, reject. And where there are cases of rejection, um, there will be a reconciliation. Necessary information um, should be verified and checked and sent. So um, that is actually the essence of this. And it's a very important activity that should happen at the end or at the beginning of a new fiscal year. Okay, so you have the balance confirmation, you have the company name, you have the address, you have the message to the customer. Then in connection with checking out a year and closing, would ask you to compare the open items listed. So of course, this is necessary for you to um, close out on this. Um, so these are the open invoices for this customer that we are sending for, for the company to verify. Once this verification is done, then we can um, move balances to the previous fiscal year. So this activity must be done before balances are moved to the previous fiscal year. So uh, we can go to the next page. Okay, let's click on. It's going to bring out the next page for the next customer, which is Zim Nigeria Limited. You can see the balances and all that. So we just close this. Now it really brings out other information. Fine. So this is very important activity, and this activity can be sent via email for confirmations to be done. So the next we're going to look at is the AP confirmation, which is uh, almost the same. So um, now we have a variant, so check for it. If you don't have a variant, please enter the company code, enter all these details, which will be displayed when I get my variant. Experience. Enter your company code just as we did for the accounts. Every setting is the same. Your sort key variants, your issue dates, you execute. Okay, same as we had for our customer, for our vendor, we also have um, to send um, balance confirmation. For the vendor to agree with our own balance and in order for us to um, close out for the year and make sure that the balances we're carrying forward to the next year are actually correct balances. So you can close this to bring for more vendor data. You can see the message, you can see the dates, you can see every basic information you need to get. So we're expecting a feedback from our vendor for this particular activity. So the last page is done because we did not specify for a specific vendor. If you want to specify for a specific vendor, please select any of these options here. Let's say you want to see for just one vendor, confirm the company code, click the drop down and just select for Vendor. If you don't select for a specific vendor, it will actually bring out for all open vendors. When we go back, <clears throat> next we're going to look at is our financial statements. Um, this is a basic requirement. At the end of every year, um, if the necessary configurations have been done end to end, you should be able to get your financial statements, which shows the details of transactions entered in a year or a month or a day, depending on your search criteria. Um, your financial statement and your premium profit and loss gives you the financial, the details of the financial activities, 
And um, it's also important for management to, it shows how the business has performed. And then a very important report to management to make key management decisions. Um, so we're going to see, this is also a very important report that can be run monthly and also can be run yearly. Let me copy this. The transaction code is F.01, or you can use um, S underscore ALL underscore H7012284. Enter my transaction code and execute. Okay, you can check for a variance. If there's any variance, I'm going to remove this. Check. Okay, so we can see different variants. I'm not sure I have a variant. So I'll teach you now how to save your variants. So I'm going to um, enter the company code. I can use uh, SPDC. I have a lot of them. I'm going to use that. Uh, these further selections are not very relevant for me. So I'm just going to select the financial statement version. The reporting year is 2020. Um, the posting period is from one to 16. The comparison we are com the next financial year we are supposed to compare this with is 2021. Also, the comparison year, the year is between one to six. Like I, like I explained, we have 12 periods uh, and four special periods that is basically used for closing activities and making sure that um, all the necessary closings are, are done. We also have the list of outputs. And this is how your report will be displayed. So I'm going to select the ALV tree control and uh, give me a better structure. You can also try other uh, report structures. So now I'm going to save this as a variant. This is to save as variant. This is to execute. So let me save this as a variant first. So click on save. So the variant name you can write. If I have something there already. something there already so just going to save this as true so you can save this as a variant and as a cube subsequently if you want to run this transaction you don't need to enter these details again just go to get variants and you can get the information you want so this is um, a structured financial statement for the year um, and also the total reports the comparison and the the, of course, the variants. This is for 2021. This is for 2020. Um, for you to get to this point, um, of course, there should be end to end configurations done at the system. This is kindly referred to a video on FICU. Um, it has step by step processes on how to create your financial statement version for you to be able to actually get to this point. In case you're trying this at your end, you can't generate this report. It means that the financial statement version has not been configured. So you can drill down for all your basic reports at the, well, at the financial position level, profit and loss level. So you can go to your assets, current and non-current. You can view, click on drop down to see your various transactions. Very well structured. And also go to liabilities and equity to see the breakdown of your liabilities, both current and non-current. Like I said, um, we have done this configuration. That is why it's been displayed. So check our previous trainings for more information on how to set up your S, uh, FSV. So this is part of the activity that should be run yearly. Uh, let's say I want to run it again and I want to go use my variant. So go to get variant. Remember, we have saved the variant. Say okay. Uh, I think you should just go down so you can see the variant here. Just double click on it to populate the information you have already saved and execute. So you can, for most of your documents, you can, you know, you can now see that this is coming in another view. Because the structure 
is um ALV grid control. So depending on your list layout, that's the feedback you're actually going to get. So you want to go back, see the next daily activity that we can perform. Okay, we're going to look at the financial statements, actual comparison. This is very good for analysis. This is very good for analysis. So I'm going to just run this transaction code. So um, in case you have to you want to check actual comparison between various different periods, it's a very important transaction code to run. And then um, to give you that um, insight you are actually looking at getting when you want to compare financial statements for different periods using their actual activities. That's uh, it's quite uh, okay. So let's check if there's a variance. Okay, I have a variance. So I'm going to just select the variance. The information have already been populated. You can see the fiscal year structure. What did we do here? We enter the currency type, enter the company code. We have other criteria you can enter, but um, these are not very important for me. You can even check at cost center level profit center level and you when you're done with this um, provide the leading ledger provide the fiscal year um, for which you're actually going to the actual for the first for the actual fiscal year which you're trying to display um, you can also for the one you're trying to compare you can actually check enter the fiscal year for the other period you're trying to compare with your actual fiscal year click on execute then of course you have your layout um, so the output you're going to get will, be, will depend on the layout type that you have selected so we actually executed this remember we got this from the variant we already saved previous topic that actually showed you how to save a variant. So you can see um, this is comparison between two periods, um, just similar to what we had previously, but this is in another view. And you can see also the drop downs. They are no longer in folders. They are actually in drop downs, which you call the drill down reports. This is also a very important um, Activity, very important information to view. You can actually check for this, navigate through different centers. If you double click on, okay, I think this is a profit center. It will give you this report based on, on profit center level um, and all of that. So just a second, I think uh, the system is going on a break. Okay, so we're just going to say no to this. Okay, so we are going to be looking at the next thing. Those uh, previous accounting period, transaction code is OB52. Now, the essence of this is to um, open the period in FI. Various modules have their closing period options open in MM. But for at the FI level, we can close the previous accounting period so that those uh, things are not being done into that period. It's necessary for that closure to be done. Go to the transaction code OB52. This is also a month end activity. Go to transfer OB5 to now and locate your variance. 
for your period. Come down, you're going to see um, for mine is SD01. You can see that these periods are actually opened. Um, so um, you have for different um, um, assignments for assets, customers, vendors, materials. You have this period. What this means is that for 2021, January to December is open. If you want to close January, you can just change this to February. If you want to close December, you can change this to November. So any range that does not exist would mean that it is closed. This is how to close. If you want to close a year, change the year to 2022, then that year is closed. That's how to change and close. Of course, these are your four um, remaining periods that is used that will be open when the first um, 12 period is closed. So I'm not going to save this, I'm going to say no. So that's how to open and close your period at the FI level. Because the next we are going to look at is um, foreign currency valuation. Please check the um, yearly, the monthly uh, um, training for this. Very, very important that um, this is done. Now you carry out the currency, foreign currency valuations before you create the financial statement for the year. Very, very important. The essence, the valuation includes, of course, the following accounts and items. It could include, um, number one, the foreign currency balance sheet account that is in the GL account that you manage in foreign currencies. That's one of the currency you need to um, do your valuations from. For the GLs that you manage in foreign currencies, you need to value those, do your evaluation of those currencies because your financial statement is going to report using the home currency. So you need to revalue based on different uh, exchange rates and changes and um, some other economic activities. Um, you need to make sure that uh, the GL account that was created as a foreign currency is valued. And another um, item you do your valuations for is for open items for customers, vendor, and of course, GL that is posted in foreign currency. So one is a foreign currency balance in the balance sheet. And the second is for open items, the customer vendor and GL that is posted in foreign currencies. Um, it's important you do your valuations for those activities. The valuation, of course, before you also do your valuation, you need to maintain your exchange rate. For, the, for which you want to do your valuations for. Now the requirements for your, one of the, some of the requirements for your foreign currency valuations is that you have to check your um, currency customizing, of course, in your configuration area to make sure that um, you have defined the exchange rates. So you have to go to your customization and make sure that exchange rate is defined in OB rates. The next is you have to define your valuation methods. Um, we have five different methods. We have the lowest value principle. We have the strict lowest value principle. Uh, we also have always value. We have the value only. So these are different valuation methods you need to um, choose. So you have to define which valuation method you're using. Um, you have to define the expense and revenue accounts for your exchange rate difference for the valuation. Now, this is very important because um, based on exchange rate um, differences and exchange rate um, changes, these accounts, these GLs that have been um, created, uh, the GLs that we manage or these differences will be posted to. You must specify the balance sheet adjustment accounts for receivables and payables. Now, these are key requirements before you can do your foreign currency valuation. Right, now a foreign currency valuation is necessary if the vendor account contains open item in the foreign, in foreign currency. If a customer account contains open item in foreign currency. If a GL account contains open item in foreign currency. 
the amount of these open items um, have to be translated into the local currency um, using the prevailing exchange rates. So that is the idea of foreign currency revaluation. And of course, at the end of the year, that has to be done in order to have the um, value in the local currency for reporting purposes. So let's see how, uh, although we might not be actually doing this, but let's run the transaction code and see how we can do our valuations. So we're going to, sorry, run this transaction code. It's important, it's a very important month and year end activity. So here you enter the company code for which you want to revalue. CS3, enter the evaluation, evaluation key dates. Of course, you have to also manage the exchange rates at OVO8. Uh, you have to look at the postings for your postings uh, selections. You have to enter the posting dates, the document dates. You go to open items. You need to tell the system which of the open items you're evaluating for. You're evaluating for customer open items. You can also and select for a specific customer. Um, also for GL, you can specify that you're evaluating for GL account balances. Of course, we have not assigned, like I said, um, this configuration has not been done. Um, one of the criteria is that you have to define your valuation method and the valuation area. So, um, of course, you are, you are going to have this error because we are here to do this stuff. So the idea is to show you, to actually guide you on how to do your variation. You have to define your valuation area, your valuation key, select any of the options that you want to value for um, and execute. Of course, um, you need to select your valuation area. Let's see if we have any options. Okay, I think I have one. Execute this. So no accounting principle assigned to valuation area. So this is a major configuration issue and it's a major requirement. The essence of running this is to tell you that these requirements are important and um, you have to run this activity at the end of the year. <clears throat> if you have issues with your configuration, you can meet your consultant to raise a, probably raise a request and let your consultant actually help you fix that um, issue. That is the basics on revaluation. The next we're going to go into, we're going to look at Asset Explorer. Um, we're going to go into the uh, fixed assets uh, module. However, we, the training for FI, um, we have actually handled in detail uh, fixed asset configuration right from the configuration down to end user activities. Please get that video to get the um, details of this, um, for the asset training. But let's see, um, as part of the month year end activity, the asset explorer is to give you um, a detail of your status of all your assets. Um, you can select for a particular assets, put your company code, um, look for a specific asset, select the fiscal year that you're looking at. So let's say I'm looking for this asset, forklift, my fiscal year is 2020. Click on enter. So the Explorer gives you a first hand view of the status of your assets, um, the planned values, the posted values, the comparison, and the parameters. So let's see. And of course, the different depreciation areas. Um, get our video and we will actually get details of this training. So you can see that for the planned values, um, the acquisition of this, the acquisition value is this, the ordinary depreciation that have been done for the period is um, four, um, four million. The change that has been made, probably a new asset was purchased, is two million. The current, at the year, of, at the year end, the current value of this asset is six, about six million. We go to the plan values, it's actually going to show you, um, depending on your depreciation area, it's going to show you the plan values for your depreciation. Uh, 
the posted values actually. So if you, if you check here, you're going to see that this has not been run. You go to comparisons, you can see that for the year 2020, this depreciation has been carried out for this asset. So um, for the first depreciation, we have this value. For, 20, for 2020, we have, for, sorry, on a yearly basis, from 2020, we have this value for 2021, 2022. So this depreciation of the one using a five-year plan. And of course, um, on a monthly basis, you're going to see this, um, how the depreciation was actually shared. So please get, um, get a copy of that video because you can see how it was split up, how the depreciation for 2020 was split up. So get the video and get to know more about your fixed assets and your um, how to post transactions there. So let's look at the end closing for um, your fixed asset. Now it's important that <clears throat> You carry out your year end for fixed assets. However, there are um, criteria that needs to be met before this is actually um, done. One of those criteria is that before you can run your depreciation, uh, all before you run your depreciation for a particular year, you must make sure that all the depreciation for those assets have been completed. It's very, very important. Depreciation for all your assets should have been closed and con concluded before you run your depreciation for the particular period. So it's a key requirement. And if they are not concluded, uh, you might not be able to run your depreciation for the year. Okay, so uh, of course, um, also for your fiscal year change, um, the earliest you can start this program is the last posting period of the current year. So the earliest you can actually do this activity is when probably depending on your fiscal year, let's say December, is the last period of your current year. You have to run the fiscal year change program for your whole company code. So that's why it's necessary that the depreciation for all individual assets should have been carried out. Um, also, one of the criteria or requirements is that you can only process a fiscal year change, uh, sorry, a, a, a year end closing. Because uh, we are going to look, of course, these are also connected. When we look, when we talk about fiscal year change, you're going to see the relationship between the change and the year end. But um, just take note that you can only process a fiscal year change in a subsequent year if the period, previous period has already been closed. So that's why this is the fiscal year change, AGRW, is linked to your end, is to your closing activities. So you cannot do fiscal year change if the previous year has not been closed. So that's um, a major pointer for you to take note of. Okay, so after the precession um, has been done, a restriction list and an asset history sheet um, should be checked. Very, very important for your, for, as part of preparation for a year in closing, after, um, you have to check the depreciation list and the asset history sheets. When you have checked and made sure that uh, all assets have been posted, changes have been recognized, you can now run your depreciation using AF. A, B. Okay, now if the final result of your depreciation is not satisfactory, you can actually carry out a, a depreciation simulation um, where you can make necessary adjustment postings. So these are very important pointers um, that you should um, take note of. Now, um, for like I said, the major requirement for you to do your year end closing program is that the precession and asset values should have been posted in full in the previous year. So, without doing your depreciation and making sure the asset values are being posted, you might not be able to do your year end closing activity. Also, um, assets that contain errors um, or are incomplete, um, 
or might not actually might prevent you from running your year end closing program. Of course, when you run your year end closing program and the program does not find any error, it updates the last closed fiscal year for each depreciation area. Um, so it's important that updates will actually be made. Updates will actually be made um, when this at a division area level, when this depreciation um, is done. Okay, um, so let's go to our, our job and see this activity. So you can select your company code, select the year that is to be closed. If you, if you execute this, of course, your if I've not done with closing out all the depreciation of the previous period, they're going to see an error that says the position not posted completely. So for all these assets, um, we need to completely post these depreciations for this year end closing activities to happen. So that is actually a pointer. I, of course, uh, make sure that you have the test run to see that these are requirements that need to be met before you can run your. So liaise like, with your with other users, especially those in the fixed asset uh, uh, postings, those are in the fixed asset department to make sure that all necessary postings are done um, before you can do your year end closing. Um, also, year change is also very important, but this has to be done on, only when the period has been, previous period has been closed. So you can select the new fiscal year you want to. Um, uh, fiscal year change you want to happen. Go to test run, execute this. Um, so you can see that change is actually a technical um, issue. Um, it's, it's different from closing a period. Now let's look at this note. The fiscal year change is only a technical step needed in order to carry out, carry forward all assets into the fiscal year. The fiscal year change has nothing to do with the year end closing for the, uh, for the bookkeeping purpose. In order to close the annual values and assets for any given period, you are required to cast. So, of course, like I've said earlier, um, this is just a technical issue um, just to um, change the period. But for, for the effect to have to hit your ledgers or your books, you have to carry out, you have to close the period actually. So the last but not the least, um, if you want to do your depreciation run, uh, you can use the transaction code AFAB. Let's go back. So this is where you post your depreciation. And of course, it could be planned. We have different types of depreciation, um, depending on the one that your mission is actually um, doing. We have um, ordinary depreciation, we have tax depreciation, we have unplanned depreciation, and, um, and the rest. So, depending on the depreciation method you use, you can run your, you can do your depreciation posting um, according to your period, depending on the period you plan to um, do that. So, of course, we can see this in step strong. You can list the assets. And, Run your depreciation at the test run level. And when I when I went to the asset explorer, I showed you some assets there that uh, a lot of assets that are yet to be uh, depreciated. So doing this can help you run the position for your assets. And of course, you can see that uh, some values have not been maintained, so the test run was not successful. So just take note that for on a periodic basis. So you use your depreciation posting run to run your depreciation. So thank you very much for this session. And um, I'm hopeful that you should have um, gained some knowledge when it comes to your end uh, year end closing activities. For more information, why not you can for training support, you can reach me via email, you can WhatsApp or call me on the number on your screen. And then um, we have other trainings. You can visit our YouTube. Um, and the Kelechia Daily, you can search for um, use um, Adele Kelechi Kelly, search for us on YouTube. We have a series of videos that will be useful to you. And you can also 
um, Adili Kirichikel is my name on LinkedIn. You can follow me on LinkedIn also. <clears throat> so thank you very much. As you can see, this um, had the day end activity, month end activity, and year end activity. So you can reach out to us for any um, of them you need to carry out your tasks. Have a nice day and um, follow us on YouTube for more videos uh, for the FI training, the CEO trainings, MN trainings. I believe it to be useful for you. Thank you very much and do have a nice day.